Hello, hello, good evening to those here nice and early and ready to go with the Women's Phoenix Cup here tonight. $500 prize pool, and today we've got the qualifiers. My name is Anthony Mel. Tonight I'll be driving us through, and we've got whippersnappers versus the question marks up first here in about two minutes or so. Getting started at 7.30, hoping to get started on the dot. Hope your night's going fantastic, and welcome on in. We'll also be checking in periodically with the mainstream. Uh, as you can see, they've restarted their timer a couple of times, so their match should be up soon. But for now, we're rocking on the Malum stream, so excited to get going and get these two teams in here. Take a look at what our match does have in store, player-wise. Whippersnappers got themselves, yes, it's Emma Page. While on the side of question marks, we got ourselves uh, so LGG, Mrs. Zinger, and Hey Lauren. So exciting matchup there. I know, um, I think both of these teams actually have both been super, super active in the Women's Cup chat in the Discord. So very excited for that to see them both get going early. Should see another minute or so. And then we'll get that nice and kicked up. Looks like Mainstream has Torchix versus Lotus 8 Esports White. I know Lotus is a very popular org, so should be fun in the Mainstream as well. We'll tap into that. We'll have our round one here now, and then it'll be a bit before we get into the losers bracket matchups where I'll have three rounds of losers brackets. The first matchup we're going to have tonight will be a best of three. And I believe two afterwards will be best of three. And then our final match of the night will be best of five. So fun night ahead for sure. And very glad to be a part of it. So thanks to Women's Cup for having me along. 730's hit, so should have the players in here soon. One more time, take a look at those rosters. Already got ourselves in. Looks like that's whippersnappers in. So just hanging out and waiting for question mark before we get going with the first matchup of the night. All right, do everybody in. I'm gonna go ahead and restart the lobby. Already getting ourselves some fun Rocket League server business here early. Always love that. So yeah, teams are in. Just getting the lobby set back up, and we should be going here soon. All right, both teams getting on it. All right, looks like we're good to go. So let's head on in to game and get ourselves started with round one. Women's Cup, again, that's Whippersnappers versus Question Marks. Game one of this best of three matchup, and the kickoff is already underway, and we are a go. I'm very excited for this one to get this going early and see who gets that offense rolling quickly. Whippersnappers and Question Marks are two teams that are both very excited early on, and already a shot on and over the head of Yas, and Lauren will be the first one to score. It's on for Question Marks. Just clean, soft touches through. 
and difficult to defend them. Sometimes the lack of speed is just as hard to read, if not harder to read, than speed. So a great start here for question marks. Can they continue it? That's always a big question. Is the singer going to try to do just that, but down from the ceiling? Comes Paige with a nice save, but that demo and the redirect could be problematic. But Emma, quick reflexes on the net to get the save across. Question marks will now fall back. We'll see how they can break back out. They can go for another offensive run, but instead, Emma, almost the drop down in front of the net. Nice play off the backboard. Yes, with nice control at midfield. Back to Paige, but does get redirected and shot back across. Could be dangerous. But Emma, ever aware for whippersnappers, does get back control and gets a demo to boot. Why not? And Singer with a nice clear there. Risk of a shot. The battle's in the corner now, and it's a dangerous one at that. Saw the opportunity, and yes, takes advantage to tie it up one to one early on. He talked about it being stuck in the corner. And he had to be, he had to be present, had to be aware, and he has to just that. It was able to clear it up for first goal for the blue side, getting whippersnappers on the board. And already continued offense. I love the read, but nice cover, question marks. Good defense. See how long it lasts, though. Page with a quick shot at the net. It's on target. It's in. Oh, man, Page, what a shot. She read that as well as you can. The double touch off the midfield. Oh, what a shot there. To make it two to one for whippersnappers. Question marks. Not quite in the back foot so far, but certainly potential for that. Emma leads it to Paige. The drop down is blocked away from Zoella. Now the 50 will drop down in front of the net for Lauren is available but has no boost actually able to make the challenge happen with no boost which is really impressive we'll see if Zoella can do much of the same but more boost does get it across one but gets intercepted by Emma now with the read from the air bounces back turns to a pass no follow-up Lauren with clear open net the page does have enough to get control sends it away pass Ms. Zinger but not pass Zoella a little bit too high Lauren in front, tapped up on the drop down. Mrs. Zinger, a lot of good looks here for question marks, but they get to find one on target out of those decent looks. Instead, oh man, that was close. I don't know how question marks got that out of the net, let alone turned it into an offensive play. Doesn't last too long though. It's propped back up and you're back on defense. You're that orange side. Midfield, I, I do like the potential here for question marks so they can fall back in time. They've got good boost. Super snappers are having to fall back and refuel. Shot off the mark. Lauren. Vizuela back to Lauren. They'll toss it up. Mrs. Singer is waiting to follow up if it gets too far out, but a slightly off the mark redirect. Now your net's open, but somehow! Question marks regroup in time to get that block across. Now it turns into a new offensive run. Yes, over the head. One into the arms of three. Mrs. Zinger takes advantage. Bounce between two. Oh no, the aerial was a bit off. But still, somehow. Question marks stay alive. No fear of a score quite yet. Oh, almost there. I love the, so far, the awareness that whippersnappers have shown aggressively onto this question mark side. You see it right there from Emma with the soft double touch right on in to make it a two goal lead for whippersnappers. Awesome shot there and a good two goal lead. That feels real comfortable early on if you're whippersnappers. These tournaments go by quick. It's easy to get flustered and a little bit out of control. Getting nice, clean leads early on is the key to get your momentum rolling. Best of three is awful short. You don't have that game one test, that game one feeler. That's what people do love in Rocket League. Question mark's not out yet, though. Mrs. Zinger will send it towards that blue side where Paige is lying in wait. Gets it. Tap up. But Matt. Now Lauren looking for control. 
Challenge with yes. No good. Eyes on Mrs. Zinger again, who will be setting up midfield if Zoel get a pass. Instead, it's Lauren. Tapped up. But through the corner, Mrs. Zinger is still there, despite it all. From the ceiling now, looking for the drop down, where Lauren and Zoella are both looking for a pinch, but neither one can find the perfect angle on the pincher. A shot, slightly off. 20 seconds left to go for two shots if your question marks. Not easy in game one, but still certainly possible. But instead, yes, on target. Slightly off is the redirect there. It's another soft touch, still blocked away. So question marks key within two, but they are out of time. And that last bit of offense will secure it for Whippersnappers. One more shot attempt, but it was no good. Game one goes the way of Whippersnappers. A lot in that game one can be taken away from, but the biggest thing for me is that both teams are clean shooters. Not just good shooters, clean shooters. The shots were precise and they were deliberate. There wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of oopsie daisy going on between any of those shots. It was all calculated. I'm I'm curious if we'll see a a, a new Dedication to momentum come out from either of these teams. So a little bit more intensity now that you're a bit more comfortable here in game number two. Speaking of which, kickoff game number two underway. See how crazy things get right away. Already Lauren at control gets it over the head of Emma. Somehow for the ceiling pass to Zoella on the drop down. Gonna be a double touch. It's in! Come on! Question marks. What a shot to start out. You cannot write it up any better than that. Whippersnapper's got a lot to recover from from that first shot because that first shot right there feels so good if you are question mark. Coming off of a game one loss, you need that kind of vibe, momentum online. Yes, had an opportunity, not gonna be there. Best of three, so already match point for Whippersnapper's. And they know that Emma with a shot on target, but it is blocked away. Paige with a follow-up. Can Zoella get their time? Yes, she can. Question marks are holding on, but the shots are still ringing through. Yes, with the soft pass to Emma, who slams it home to tie it up early on. Not even one minute for two goals to be online. Already our third kickoff this early. The challenges turn to demos, turn to opportunity for Mrs. Singer. The double touch is not going to be available and turns into another demo. There's the physicality we were looking for. Yes, we'll pinch off the backboard to get away back to the question mark side. Singer, no boost, but does have good control. Gets it past one and is buying a lot of time for backup to get there. They've got some fuel online now. The types of small plays that do go missed from time to time but mean a lot. Now Lauren with the drive through. A bit too much on that one, but Mrs. Zinger had a decent look. The offense looks even better this time from question marks. And you can see it right here, the touch over, but too far to the right. Zinger driving it back through. Too much, but tries to stop it and slow it down for Zoella, but wasn't there again. I love the looks. I love the opportunities. They're just not quite perfect yet from question marks, but they're still so improved from game number one. It feels beyond possible that shots like this could come through. A denied from Whippersnappers. Now, yes, with a pop-up. Zinger with a nice deflect. These corners have been dangerous so far for question marks when it's been on that orange side. Whipper Snapper seem to thrive on the play in that corner and slowing the game down. <laughs> Lauren almost pulled through big time there. Zinger at midfield does get it back to Lauren, who will get the pinch to the ceiling on the follow up, but slightly off. Maybe it's a fake. Call calculated. Turns into opportunity and goes home. 
two to one for question marks. Opportunist so far, and great comms for Zoella to get out of the way of that shot too. That could have become very claustrophobic very quickly for question marks, but instead turns into a nice goal and a nice one goal lead with 2.30 left to go. A lot of boost online for Whippersnappers. This will be a tough offense for question marks. They do get it through. It's not for long. Yes. Pass over to Emma. Emma with the shot. The demo for the smoke screen. Won't set up perfect, but you still have more chances. Page off the crossbar. Yes, with a follow-up. And it was a pass, but opportunity no longer there. Yes, with a nice interception, though. Lauren catches it right on back. Sends it coast to coast, but Emma gets there just in time. It's scary for whippersnappers. and close, but it does work out. I like that demo. What could that set up now? Paige with the shot. It's off, but Emma with a follow-up too much on it. And the midfield battle will go through. Low boost and dead members on the side of question marks. Now the ball in front of the net. Is there anyone there? No, there's not. Yes, we'll slow up. Look for the challenge to get a pass through and continue the offense. Emma reads it well. Now, yes, so close to a perfect read. Can Paige get there? Yes, the connection's there. The double. And close. How many times have I said close? Because how close has it been? And the demo is still ringing through is now question marks looking for an insurance goal with one minute left to go. Well, whippersnappers just want to tie it up. Emma does have a chance with that challenge. Yes, pulls through. It's a fake to Paige. They're broken apart. <laughs> the demos do not stop. If you love a physical style of Rocket League, this has been your game to watch. Paige, it's close. Oh man, these shots are insane. The fact none have gone in. Will this one find a home? No, it will not. Whippersnappers keeping the defense on. They do not want any insurance to come through. This one's gonna be tough. Too tough. There's the insurance that the question marks have been looking for. There's a zinger off of the wall to Zoella. Nice and clean in there. And the GG in their name will play well. For game number two, we're going to go the distance here, it seems, provided the miracle does not happen for whippersnappers. Emma looked for the play, but it was intercepted. And this offensive push, four question marks, is how you lock down a game. One more goal on the way out will go to Mrs. Zinger. And for whippersnappers, no reason to hang the head low. Still have another game to go, but for question marks, that was the kind of game you needed. You needed a pick-me-up game, you needed a good comeback game, and they got both. Momentum will be swung for sure. Nothing's going to be free in this game three. It's awesome we get to be a part of it. Question marks do take it. And look at that, those stats. It's, it's incredible to see how even the, both the ball possession and the field domination were. Exactly. A deep breath reset. That's all that's needed. But an early champion's field here. Which should up the ante for both of these teams even more so. That was such a fun game to watch. It was the, sh the the shooting for me was what was so impressive. And I said that for game one because I, I truly meant it and it continues here. I'm very interested to see the type of shooting that we, that we see heading into the next one.
Here we go. Kickoff in game number three. It's away. We're a go. Winner take all in this one for moving on in the winner's bracket. And Paige follows it up and gets whippersnappers on the board nice and early with the one goal lead. We talked about it, those kickoffs. They were so imperative in game number two and they show up again on the very first one in game three. Again now, Emma with the pass up. Will be for long, Paige, another shot on target. It's close, but not gonna be home. Now Lauren with a chance, it'll pass back. Eyes on Zoella, who does tap it up. It's wide left. Paige, who was the shooter on that first goal. Looking to get a pass, a pass to Emma. It was possible, but it was denied. This turns into a question mark offensive play. The drop down. And the boost is there for Mrs. Zinger, but unable to directly follow up. Instead, it's a slower reaction. Still offensive, though, for question marks. Maybe a better chance at a goal lasted a bit longer. Had that play lasted a bit longer. Instead, denied. Whippersnappers are really trying to contest that midfield to keep the ball away from their side. The dangerous plays like that keep arising. Another one, another block. Can you do it again? Yes, we'll go aggressive. Does have Emma for backup. Lord and Mrs. Zinger actually both contest their own shot there. Turns to a demo for one and a missed shot for the other. How would you want if your question marks? Nice interception from Lauren. Doesn't last for long until Whippersnappers get the clear. Paige and Emma both collapsing from the left side. Yes, holding the right angle, but needs to fall back for defense. Does get it past one, gets it past two. Gonna force Lauren the rush on back. This could turn to a great play for Whippersnappers. Emma waiting for it, does get control. Passes down to Paige with a shot. Gets deflected. Yes, though, setting up, looking for something from Emma, who has an open range. The shot is there. It'll drop down in front. Took a bit too much time. The whippersnappers keeping up the offense. We'll see how long whippersnappers can stay on offense. I'm surprised the ball's even stayed on the side of question marks. But they're having problems clearing it out and then collapsing. Now they've got full boost. This is the opportunity if you can get to it. But it's just not there the way you'd want it to be. Paige will have a shot before anybody else. Mrs. Singer does get a hold of it. It's going quick, but yes, is able to get there in time. Eyes on Emma yet again. Combining well with her teammates and whippersnappers continue this these very, very uh, impressive offensive runs. Emma will win that challenge out. Now Paige will look for a pass from the corner. Maybe will have to follow through, but does have yes. Flying and wait. Boost becoming a big problem here for the question marks. Only just now refueling onto Lauren. But if they step away to refuel, they leave their net vulnerable. And all this is time wasted. Time they need to be on offense. Still down one goal. Paige will make it tough to find the shot through. And here's Whippersnappers on the collapse. Emma to the corner, does get picked up, but not for long. Paige now taps it up. The singer will follow through, but is very low in boost on the landing. It'll be up to Lauren here. He does get a hit on, but just not enough from question marks to get a shot through. You're running out of time to find these shots with your question marks. Now for Whippersnappers, it's a matter of holding on and finding that right there. Insurance comes out from Paige. One minute, three seconds to go, and two goals are now online for the Whippersnappers. Paige showing up big time in this game, number three. So now time is not on your side if you're question marks. You gotta take shots quickly as you can because we've seen this is not a high scoring affair. The whippersnappers ready to slam the door shut. Still dangling in the front. Page with another. It's close, but it is blocked. 
Emma does stop it as well. Back with control. Yes, with the shot! And that door might have just been slammed for the Whippersnappers. 3-0 with 37 seconds left to go. That is exactly where you want to be if you are the Whippersnappers. Thirty seconds. Going to take a miracle for the question marks to advance here in the winners bracket early on. Do you have a miracle in you? Now down to fifteen. But the whippersnappers want one more goal on the way out, and they're gonna find it from Paige again. It's a hat trick. A great pass there, getting it over the head of Mrs. Zinger. Paige with a perfect follow-up. And the whippersnappers pull through big time in game number three. An awesome series here between these two teams early on. Potentially one more goal for whippersnappers, and it is indeed. This, the roof is blown off of this game three, 5-0, but we all saw the same game and how close it was. A heck of a matchup and a close one for question marks. The Whippersnappers just came out looking too darn good in round one of the Women's Phoenix Cup qualifiers. <laughs> Why not? One more. Coming out from Paige. Had those stats. The Wikipedia. And enjoy the victory, Whippersnappers. One more kickoff on the way out here. And it has been, <laughs> this one's picked off. So no seventh goal find its way through, but that game will go to Whippersnappers and they take the series and they do it with an exclamation point here in game number three. Again, Paige showing up big time. She really went crazy in this one. Thank you, Wind, I appreciate that. GG's to both teams. Good luck in the rest of your tournament your areas of the tournament I should say grande huevos appreciate the follow as well and Aaron thank you as well all right let's get this uh, game adjusted here and figure out where we're going next Alrighty, let's take a peek in on the mainstream as well. Looks like it's been an exciting one over there. Alright, now hang out with me while I do take a look and figure out where we are going next. I'm going to send you back to take a peek -sees at the mainstream. Again, just give me one moment here.
All right, so we got our matchup now. It's going to be Max Candies versus Artistic Ashes. Go ahead and get that title changed. Once we have everybody in here, we'll get ourselves going. Our first matchup tonight was a fun one. Hopefully this one lives up to the same exact type of hype. Got ourselves, looks like Max Candies are in here, just waiting on Artistic Ashes. And hey, there they are, right on cue. Let them know we're good to go when they are, and we'll get ourselves started up here. There we go, kickoff. Our next series, Max Candies and Artistic Ashes. Oh no, looks like the logos did not update. Get those fixed. There we go. Now we're really underway, now that the logos are here. Great logos from both teams, even better looks at shots. McKaylin was close already. Chloe now with the follow up. The look on target it was up to Candy. But instead of fake out, for Michaela now who leads with it. Will drop down in front, but Linko is able to get the better. Michaela falling through. Has a good look. The double touch is close. And dangerous for Artistic Ashes, who have really yet to get that ball out of their own side of the pitch and get some looks on target. Maybe this is the one from Seyfrey. Instead, Chloe finds it. Safe Ray is holding on to some decent boost, so could look to contest and get to that corner first. Linko was the first one there. Refills boost. Has a decent look, too. Pass down. Safe Ray gets demoed out. It's an opening for Candy. And it's slant home by Candy. 1 0 for Max Candy early on. You love that look early if you're rooting for that blue side and for Artistic Ashes. Feels like the secret to success right now is get out of your side of the pitch. Do this right here. Get some offense rolling and at least get some looks on target. That's where your opportunities will come from. McKaylin brings it down. Touches it one more time, and that one more time was for the second goal for Max Candies. Kickoff number three is a go. Same rule of thumb for me, same thing I'm looking for from Artistic Ashes, but oh man, what a pinch from Max Candies. Almost were able to find themselves a third goal and quickly at that. Instead, Linko with a good look. Not good enough. Safe for A2 deep. Up to Pepper. Does get demo, but she got the touch. Safe for A to Pepper. Pepper with the shot. Candy with the block, but it props up and back down. And somehow, Max Candies are able to recollect themselves enough for the save. Linko with another shot. This one's a pass to Pepper, and that time. Nothing to block for Max Candies. Artistic Ashes get on goal. A big time score fest already, comparatively to our previous series. Safe Ray to Pepper. 
I liked that look, but the bumps made it tough, and the lack of boost was doing the same exact thing. Now Candy. Looking for something to Chloe. Mikaelin was back readjusting a bit field, looking to refuel, but now Mikaelin's got the great look. Chloe with a follow-up shot, and it's fantastic! Three to one for Max Candies. So far tonight, from all the teams, all four of them that we've gotten to see, the reads are so impeccable, and the shots are the shots are of a certain quality that I, I, I do cast a lot of Rocket League. I cast a lot of very high level. I cast high school competitive, kind of a you name it. But again, another one from Candy. The type of shots that I'm seeing tonight are very impressive because they're coming from a perspective, and you see here, uh, Kaylin was off on the shot, turned into more of a passing opportunity, but Candy followed it up perfect. That stuff that is so you so seldom see in those scenarios. I can't tell you the amount of times I've had co-casters bring up talking points of, of the passing game and how rare it can be, even at your highest levels. But so far tonight in the Women's Phoenix Cup, it's been more passing than shooting almost, and it's been great. Speaks to the quality of player. We'll see if that continues here. Artistic Ashes looking to get more on board. Linko does try to slow it down, but having a tough time has Pepper for backup. And Pepper now looking to clear away. Chloe, shot on. Down in front. Pepper, one block. Is it enough? So far, yes. Candy didn't have the boost for Chloe does. Now the fight is good. McKaylin taps it up, but safe for A for the clear. Doesn't last long. Chloe on target. Indeed. Five to one for Max Candies. High scoring affairs, but they feel close. I'm not quite sure if it's just the the level of shooting we're seeing, if it's the constant presence on the defense where it does feel like every goal is earned. Minus, I suppose, that final goal last series, and Chloe does it again. Four shots, three goals, six total for Max Candies. But even this one, I mean, you, you, you saw the read was almost there on the defense from Artistic Ashes. Still game one, still lots of game to go. So they will certainly be able to get back going. And it looks like they do have their opponent. The winner of this matchup as McKaylin does send home another one, make it seven for Max Candies. The winner of this matchup will be taking on Midwest Mafia and Dina in the next matchup. Fifty seconds left to go here in game number one. Artistic Ashes have shown me signs of what can make them for sure work as a team. I'm just looking for more of it and a bit more clean of a performance. And I think they can definitely contest a bit more. Prop up from Candy. That'll make it eight here in game one. So the shooting not done, at least for the moment. Here we go, one more kickoff. 30 seconds left to go here in game number one. You're looking for big time plays early on from Artistic Ashes in game number two to get off to a good start. Candy, a nice chip up over the head of Artistic Ashes. I thought that might turn into a goal, but instead, this is another offensive run. We'll continue out, save Ray, low and boost. Pass out to Pepper. He does have Linko on the follow-up. One more shot. Going to be denied. That will do it for game number one. Goes to Max Candy. Going to click an early ad here. Just so it doesn't happen during game. For those still hanging, Max Candies take game one, eight to one. Uh, the goals were certainly there and impressive. <laughs> Cannot deny that for Max Candies.
Heading over to DFH Stadium next. For game number two. Appreciate you following, Angus. I'll tell you again when the once the ad's over, just in case you don't hear me. Again, appreciate all those follows tonight. Hey, we, we got over 300 total followers tonight. Love to see that. Perfectly timed with the Women's Cup. Awesome. Well, thank you again. <laughs> we take those, right? Game number two on the horizon once the teams get loaded on in. There they go. Slow loading that time. I got a little nervous. I thought, thought the servers were dying out in us. Almost done with that HUD. <laughs> oh man, early on, Max Candies on the kickoff. They pick off right where they left it. Safe Ray went to fake for Linko, but Linko just turned out. Slight miscommunication there from Artistic Ashes early on, and Max Candies take advantage. Linko with the touch. We'll get it down towards that blue side. Just the just need to get aggressive early. The more shots you take are shots that Max Candies cannot take. That's how my brain's going to work. Chloe, no boost. Gets it down anyway. Almost able to use the bump to turn into a double touch. Candy from the corner. Over the head of one. Over the head of two. Sets it up for Chloe. Pepper with the denial. Chloe. Drop down in front. Eyes on McKaylin and Candy. McKaylin, decent chance. Let's it go. Now Linko, Marcus the Gashes with a chance on offense. How long will that last? Safe Ray has good boost. Does get it off the sidewall. Candy will get it to a lot and wait. Pepper. The positioning this time is much improved from Marcus the Gashes. Can they turn that into a goal? Yes, they can. Linko, bang. It felt inevitable with the way that was played. It was kind of just a weird one, but it just felt like the positioning from Artistic Ashes was good enough to really get through. Chloe will get it past. Does have a Pepper back there. Pepper will tap it up. Now we'll look to follow it. Michaela. Touch instead. Has Candy and boost. Candy's boost will go to a demo. A lot of midfield contest here so far in this game. Number two, one of the biggest changes I've seen. Close one there for Ashes. And I feel like for Ashes, that works out great because they've had good awareness on that side. they got an open net now, and Safe Ray going to make the run for it. Does get stopped by Chloe. They cleared by McKayla. Pepper will fall back to the defense with Linko. There is a demo onto one. Going to be up to Pepper, who's low on boost. And McKaylin will have a decent look. Safe for a ready to drop down. Linko will be the one to save him. <laughs> that demo will set up for Chloe, who will look for the double. But Linko says not today. Still tied here in game number two in this best of three. Round one of the loser's bracket now. Pepper gets it over the head of one, over the head of two. A nice run for Artistic Ashes. A Pepper was out of boost, and Linko committed too deep, but does have Safe Ray for backup. Now Safe Ray to the sky on the drop down to Pepper with the shot! Oh no, off the side. The look was gorgeous from Artistic Ashes, but not that time. Now it's a rush back for defense.
That is a shot you want back because it's now turned into the second goal for Max Gandy. Just a great bump from McKaylin to open up the potential for that shot from Chloe. That's what I was talking about earlier with the teamwork. There's a, there, there is a real reason that my attention, my, my awareness has brought so much to it because it's so important from these teams and it's so there so far tonight in the Women's Cup. Artistic Ashes though. The improvement's been great here in this game number two, so I do expect to see at least one more good look here soon. I thought that last one was it to, to get the lead for Orange, but it wasn't there. Winner of this series will be facing Midwest Mafia, Dima. Chloe looking to lock it down to Candy. Over the heads. Can't find it, but has McKaylin and no combine to get that two goal lead. Only took two cars to do it, but they break through. And they'll take it. A much more comfortable lead with one minute and 21 seconds left to go. Two goals feels much more difficult to get through than one for Artistic Ashes with the way the defense has been there for Max Candies. Pepper with a lot of boost will look for a deep shot. Trying to take that one coast to coast, but it is not there. Now Chloe will drop down. The Caitlin's already deep, getting demos, and that demo worked perfectly. Called a smoke screen, called a goal for Chloe. Four total for Max Candies. Doing much of the same of what they did in game one, where at the end of game one, they really upped the ante, and they're doing it here in game number two. with the pinch, looking for Chloe, but instead to rush back, a nice save from Candy to keep that one from being a goal. Michaela waiting in the corner, 50 seconds left to go. Max Candy just looking to close this one out and waste that clock away. A tap up from Linko. Michaela with the denial, at least for now. Pepper and save for eight, didn't have opportunity. Now Candy to the net. Pepper with a great save. It continues. Save for A. Delenko gets it past Candy. Falling it all the way through. There's the touch, the drop down. McKaylin for the goal. But it's not there quite yet. A demo on the way out and Max Candies will do it here in game two. They'll take this series in a 2-0 and move on to face Midwest Mafia Adina. Well, the stats certainly speak for themselves, but we got a quick turnaround in this one as Midwest Mafia Adina is already ready to go, so... Give me just a moment here to get set up for that next one. And we'll be all set and ready to go. Till then, we'll take a peek at the mainstream. They tend to do best. They're going to come out here super aggressive off kickoff. We're going to see Courtney getting in everyone's face, setting up her teammates, or the other way around. We might see uh, Sanoki and Lilo doing all that aggressive pushing, and then Courtney just completing the plays. Yeah, I think the major players are asking this one of two that have not been the most active on either side. Although, Courtney, we've seen what they can do. They've been really true team leaders. How are the teammates going to add up and help them? Because this is a, this is a team based game mode in 3v3. And, well, that's those teammates are going to have to be a big part of it. Being out oh! to start trying to get that one, but she could not get that second touch off the ceiling. And it will be fair to waste, Courtney. And if you'll pass, be already get her steps. And, we're seeing this back and forth, so from Sanoki, and again, that midfield, the meatballs have been a try and true method for them in keeping uh, consistent in this series, and if they continue the challenge, they're going to continue to win, because Curiosity hasn't really brought all that many players forth there in that midfield space. Yeah, these centers, though, continue to be dangerous. It's feeling like a rice cooker right now. There's so much pressure. I'm expecting to see a shot happen, and still nothing there as Courtney a little bit too far back there as third woman didn't want to overextend herself wants to continue keeping this kind of level here 
as both of these teams are sitting at an even uh, score, even amount of games in this series. We see the ball, though, just kind of being thrown around. Everybody getting a little bit of feelers here, trying to figure out what they need to do to score next. That would have worked, but Nachos miss. Just not helping the team in meatballs. And the meatballs here are still trying to push up, but Courtney will continue to try to test that midfield. And so far, that midfield has stayed consistent for the last minute and a half. This entire game has really been the meatballs on offense, looking for those chances. And it's curiosity who continue to have to feel the brunt of it. Courtney, first touch will go to the side and she'll get that pinch away. Lilo hitting it down to the back wall. Double tap attempt. She's got it, but that will hit the post. And it will go away of the net as another awkward touch. Sanoki gave it away, and the meatballs are already back to offense. Still, again, another offensive attempt. Sanoki passed one. Courtney has had to look at it. That shot saved oh. away, but they will score. Curiosity. <laughs> wow, I was almost sorry to interrupt that one. Jeez. <laughs> All right, let me check in on start time. I want to make sure every, everything's keeping organized here. Might have to delay this just a few moments. Going to shoot for... Going to go ahead and aim for 8.30 on that to keep on time and go off what the admin said for, for the event. Players will be warming up in free play, it looks like. All right, so let's take a peek back in. Off the side Over at here. that mainstream. It's just going to be... Let's add me into it, huh? Forth. Can we see Hollow get to this touch before anybody on Curiosity? No, Sanoki up high, getting flip reset, keeping things right in towards Courtney, who's looking to get the angle and the follow. Oh, no, you can see me it typing. Down. It's ruined. Yeah, unfortunate there, but still a two goal lead is. I can type. Here. I can type well. Clear from Lilo. This will go <laughs> all the way down the field, and Hollow wasn't initially ready for that, but. It will be another shot. Courtney! Oh, she's found the near angle. And Curiosity will add a third to their tally. There she is. That is the Courtney all right. we all know. She just goes out there. Mainstream's been exciting the tonight. I've, uh, right spot every time I've tapped in a bit while I've been hanging out with you guys. And again to Radiator Springs. And it's been enjoyable to watch. To go and <laughs> just adds to the magic. <laughs> okay, just continues onward here. Is this one off the sidewall? Yeah, the turnaround Lilo time is a bit quick, unfortunately. Right now, again, well, I say unfortunately, but when it does kind of kind add to the experience up, a bit, you know? Heavy offense, and, you know, I guess the meatballs who have wanted to have everything to win about the midfield. That Curiosity and meatballs like here. That's a good matchup. Against them here is, uh, for the meatballs, again, they, 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 they're they playing right into what Curiosity wants them to play into at this point. Curiosity just waiting uh, for that defense, and now they attack, and that's when Wow, I can't scary. believe they were able to get back control of that. Plays because the meatballs just aren't ready for that kind of pace. Yeah, they were boost starved most of that play. So good to see them get it clear away from their net, get some boost, try to go on the oh, attack. Oh, a shot. But it's not going to help when Lilo adds to this already racked up amount of goals happening for Curiosity 4 0 so far in this game. Yeah, you mentioned 4 0. I'm, this is I'm pretty excited to see. Absolute response. I'm pretty excited to see this next matchup. I feel like Max Candy's shooting was really great there, and obviously being able to come in warm does help. Uh, Midwest Mafia and Dina, uh, their matchup. Let's go take a look at that. I'll give you guys the scoop and what we had. Let's see. Um, why don't I see their matchup? They went against Curiosity. Oh, so they went against a team that we're watching against Meatball. They, uh... It looks like it was actually a DQ, unfortunately, that allowed Curiosity to advance. So hopefully no issues. 
um, will come up. Um, as for Max Candies, they originally lost 2-0 to Meatballs, who we're seeing go against Curiosity here. Artistic Ashes lost to uh, Women's Standing in round one. And they lost that 2-1. So, tough end there for them. Following this next cast of Max Candies and Midwest Mafia and Dina, which Midwest is one word, may as well fix that while we're chit-chatting and hanging out. Following that matchup, um, we will have the loser of, of match N, uh, which they have to bring that back. is happening right now between Gen G, Mobile One, and Whippersnappers, who moved on as we saw on our stream. Uh, we'll have the loser of that matchup, and we'll have the winner of the matchup we're watching now. So we'll get to follow Max Candies and or Midwest Mafia and so Dina else, as as well, on the way through. Shout out to Sporty and Rocket Star, so both like super right instrumental talk about, talk about the, uh, in this event. And it's been a fantastic one. Super glad to be a part of it. So appreciate them magnificently. Do have another update here. Looks like Lotus AD Sports White do get the better of Pandora's GGs and move on. Pulse and women standing are going on right now, as well as question marks versus MMA. So question marks still alive today. Love to see that for question marks. Going to be a bit partial to the teams that we've had over here on, on our stream. Kind of hard not to. You're going to have to figure out how you can start pushing everything towards curiosities. I'm going to take another ad break here just so they don't pop up during the game. Go for bumps. Boost And while we're just waiting for it to get started. That's just kind of my answer, but we'll see what plan they come up with. Right oh, off kickoff from Nacho on Team Meatballs. Come on. Two seconds in, and I think that's a pretty good You can't write it up any better than that. The perfect loss in the kickoff, and that's what they were looking for here. Two seconds, and Nacho already uh, proving to you, Pocket Star. They have a plan, or at least they have somewhat of a plan here. Yeah, definitely not a caster curse there, as I did. <laughs> the good old caster curse, huh, Rocket Star? Team win this. Yes, I definitely want to see a game five. I want to see these girls, uh, you know, really coming down to the wire on this moment here. It's going to be a save, though. Looking at how Hollow takes control of this. Off the ceiling, flip reset. Gets it past Lilo. Sonoki with a touch that lines up for Nacho. Where is her third? A bit all right, got about one minute left to go, so let's go ahead and give our intro for our game. So we're all on the same page. Welcome in. If you don't know me, my name is Anthony Malum. I am a variety caster, and today we're having some fun with Rocket League Women's Cup. It's Phoenix Cup, and thanks for having me. Prize pool pretty pretty great for this tournament, and this is day one, the double elim portion, and these girls have been going crazy so far. We'll see if they continue it up here. The next matchup, we've got Max Candies versus the Midwest Mafia. Adina. Adina. I can say that word. I'm great. <laughs> and we'll have that going soon. Take a look at the rosters while we do hang out and wait. Max Candies. We'll see the same old run back. Midwest Mafia, you see what they're working with. We've let them know we're good to go. Should have gaming in front of us soon. And they're loading on up, so let's head on in. And here we go. Max Candies versus Midwest Mafia and Dina. Let's do it on the kickoff. Max Candies, we've learned they're shooters. And they try to keep it up here early on, right off the kickoff, looking for a goal, but it turns into opportunity for Midwest Mafia. Over the head and into the goal for Laura. They started off real well. You love when a game starts out like that. Get the adrenaline going right from the start, but Max Candies, they like to play the same style of play. 
So the further we get, I'm really excited to see how it works out. You see it there from Candy coming up close, but Caffeine gets the control and gets it down deep. Remember, Kalen was waiting, but gets demoed out. Now another chance for a goal. This one's propped up. Izzy Bell. Off the top to Caffeine. It's in. 2-0, Midwest Mafia. Don't you love it when a plan comes together and you can read that one so well. You love the backboard layups there for Midwest Mafia. Felt clean, looked great. 2-0 lead now. Coming out real strong. Candy does get it past one. Now on the dribble, looking for the pass to Chloe. Chloe with the prop up. Now the drop down, McKaylin. It looks great on paper but does get interrupted by Midwest Mafia. Candy will have another chance. Watch McKaylin. There it is, but Caffeine denies it. Wow, these two teams are matched up great. You can see it, even this early on. Chloe on the run, does get a past one, but has two more to go through, and Izzy Bell will deny it. Now Caffeine over the head of Candy to the corner to Izzy. It's all net, baby. 3-0 early on, Midwest Mafia. They have come out swinging in this game one. But the opportunities have been there for Max Candy's end. And that is what I am not going to forget about here for the blue side. McKaylin with a demo on Caffeine. Now the drop down from Chloe. It'll hang in front, and Candy will get the demo, but unable to get it on target. Chloe does to McKaylin, but blocked away. McKaylin will bring it through, looks for the bump to create the space needed, but it isn't there. The offense will persist over the head, into the net. Max Candy is on the board. The physicality that Max Candy's came out with that time was really important to making that work. Because I don't think without physicality you're scoring in Midwest Mafia with how aggressive they're playing. Candy now reads it perfect. That's two. I told you we had a game on our hands. Wow. All right, everybody uh, collect their breath because we got another kickoff. Still three minutes left to go. Izzy Bell will look to drive it, but runs into Chloe. Laura's there. Caffeine, now with the challenge. It holds control. McKaylin into the net to try to get a demo on the Izzy Bell to set up, but defense is required for Max Candies and Chloe with a slower pinch. But Caffeine can't come up with it, lets it go deep. Izzy Bell does a full commit. Caffeine. Going to get a pass to Chloe. Chloe takes the fight. Knowing that McKaylin was already setting up for the rotation. And you'll see McKaylin come up big here. Get it through from the corner. And it's set up decent if Candy and Chloe can get there. But instead, Midwest Mafia pull through with the denial. Now the shot. McKaylin able to prop it up with some help from Chloe. And Chloe stays in the same spot and it works. No boost needed for that save. Still one goal game. Caffeine, lots of boost to work with. But lots of bumps to deal with. And that gives a chance for Max Candies. Down to McKaylin. We'll go back out to the corner and buy some time. Now Candy looking for the double. Caffeine gets there first. Still alive, Chloe. On target, tie game. High octane Rocket League is this series and it's game one. The last best of three that we'll have here tonight. <laughs> Watching these two teams, I wish this was the best of five that we've had. My goodness. McKaylin looking for one early, goes to Caffeine instead. Now it's aggressive for Midwest Mafia. Izzy Bell will take the challenge with Chloe, knowing that there's backup waiting, but now it's over the head of the backup, and it's a chance for Max Candies. 
Candy and Caffeine will go at it. Deadly combo, Candy and Caffeine. There's a shot. The drop down. McKaylin looking for the double touch. Not there. But still alive. Now Chloe and Caffeine will fight over it again. And Chloe sticking with it still. Real imp impressive there for Chloe. But Isabel looking to drive it home. Runs into opposition. Chloe with the Spider Man approach, hanging on on top of the net. McKaylin, Candy, can't get to it. Caffeine finds the opening and makes it four to three. Just could not get back to their spots in time. Max Candy's, uh, they've been doing so well at adjusting on the fly, but that time they just couldn't get to it quick enough, and it's tough that it goes down that way, but still have time to work with. Still 40 seconds. The Midwest Mafia on the kickoff! Get some much needed insurance in this matchup, making it five to three. I know that Midwest Mafia fan base is a ra rowdy bunch, so make sure you sound off for Indina. Which reminds me, the logo is not updated yet. Again, sorry about that, guys. I'll get that fixed. The program has not been very nice to me tonight. There it is. Sorry about that. Right on time as Max Candies get back in the board. You cannot take your eyes off this game. Now 22 seconds to go, and you need one goal to potentially force an OT if you are Max Candies. What's the play? We've seen Chloe McKaylin really get aggressive in that net to set up shots. Do you have time and trust to do that? McKaylin says yes, gets one on, but Caffeine with a block in time. Turns into a demo from Izzy Bell. Chloe can't find the shot. McKaylin Candy low on boost, but they gotta make it work. McKaylin's filled up, two seconds left. One more shot! Is it good? No, it's blocked out! It was close! But Midwest Mafia do pull through! Wow! I thought we were set in stone going to OT with that last attempt. I, I bet the players, I bet they all thought much of the same. But instead, that one goes to Midwest Mafia. On to DFH Stadium for game number two. Woo! The adrenaline's pumping after that one, huh, chat? Oh no, it's like a player got yeeted. All right, yeet solved, we're back in. Game number two in this best of three. Loser's bracket. Trying to fight your way back in this dump, double elimination Women's Phoenix Cup. They'll be awaiting the loser of Gen G and, and Whippersnappers, and currently Whippersnapper is holding a two to one lead on Gen G Mobile One Racing. So really great competition awaiting you no matter who moves on. This kickoff, one of the calmer ones we've seen. Midwest Mafia already on match point. Caffeine looking for the drop down. The backup wasn't quite there. Izzy Bell is playing deep back, wisely so, on that third line defense. Wisely because of this right here. Here's the offensive run for Max Candies. Chloe with the bump to set up for Candy and McKayla. But the opportunity did not present itself that time, and it turns into a turnaround goal for Midwest Mafia, and they are on the board first. Caffeine just drived it through. It looked so casual, I thought it was going to turn into a simple corner play, but instead turns into an even simpler goal for Midwest Mafia. And they're on board first, but 
as we saw in game one, it's going to take a lot of goals to lock this game down. Already, Max Candy's looking to come out and get themselves on the board, not to be shut out for long. McKaylin from the corner. Prop it up on the drop down. Is Candy there? Izzy Bell's there first. Chloe, full boost, though. Is it on target? No, it's not. Candy to McKaylin. The shot! It's good! It's good! Oh, good! Oh, good! Wow! Again! Chat, they don't stop shooting! It's got me jumping in my chair! I don't know if the Women's Cup can reimburse all the damage I've done to my rug from jumping up and down on my chair so far in this event. What a shot. Tied up one to one. Watch Laura. Chloe with the challenge. And Candy will clear it away. But it's going to be at the Chloe. Which really do the brunt of the work. Low boost for Max Candy's. Caffeine has to play great defense here, but actually Lar pulls through, but Caitlin still has opportunity. Izzy Bell with the denial, at least for the time being. Candy will go back. Chloe props it. Boost, a significant problem here in this game too already. Surprisingly so at the boost management, both in the previous series we saw from Max Candies and in game one, what we saw the West Mafia was great. You can create a nice clear there from McKaylin. Now Chloe looking for the pinch. Does find a setup. It's propped. Candy. Caffeine over the head. Now Chloe will look to go for that corner pass that Max Candies have made look so iconic. And that's why. Oh, it's close. But not in that time. But now the setup. Chloe with a challenge, but can't get it past Caffeine. These teams are just so, so evenly matched. But Caffeine finds the opening. It's not good! It's off the top of the crossbar! Will that come back to bite Midwest Mafia? Losing an opportunity like that. Caffeine already back on from the corner. Isabel deep at third line. Will be there for when Chloe goes aggressive. Caffeine is the one to play it. Now the hit gets redirected back to Isabel, who's in the corner on the blue side. Backs up now for the play on offense from Max Candy, should it come. They're back. Caffeine on target, but denied and blocked out. Will the shooting continue? Caffeine set up for but Kalen's low and boost. Now Izzy Bell off the backboard. Caffeine, no good. The pacing of this match has been incredible. Only one minute and 10 seconds left to go already. Chloe. Holding control, holding time. Taking back the pace. Now the fake, oh, it works out so well. A good old fashioned ball control masterclass. Into the dribble, into the chip. Right into the net. That's a 2-1 lead for Max Candies. On kickoff, Max Candies did have a decent look. And West Mafia, 50 seconds feels like eternity given the way these games have gone. Pacing in this one's been quick, but there's been lots of shots in not a lot of time. So you can continue that up here. They're looking okay on boost. Izzy Bell needs to refuel. A demo. That's opportunity, but it's blocked out. That's huge for Midwest Mafia. Max Candy's wasting time trying to look for safe goals, but Izzy Bell with a big time clear for Midwest Mafia. They'll get another chance. Caffeine. It'll bounce past. I believe that was Chloe who got control, but Candy got past. Caffeine in the corner. Less than 10 to tie it up. Izzy Bell will have a chance. It's on, is it close enough? No, it's not. The boost refuel, but it's gonna touch first. We're going to game three. Max Candy's take. Game number two. Fifty-fifty on field domination. Ball possession certainly in favor of Max Candy's.
Oh, sorry about that. Hope that sound didn't come through for you guys on the microphone, but man, champions feel time. This feels like a deserved champions field for both of these teams and for us. Right, chat? Heck of a game so far. Heck of a series. Max Candies. Midwest Mafia and Dina. One of these two teams is moving forward in this double E limb for the Women's Phoenix Cup. Who will it be? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Whippersnappers and Genji is still going on. Whippersnappers still hold a two to one lead in that series. Max Candies early on do have some pressure. Caffeine is able to get the touch on though. You see the rush back from Max Candies. The demo, the shot, it's good. Izzy Bell. Gets Midwest Mafia on the board first, and they do it off the back of great team play as we've seen, but an even bigger demo. Wow. Wow. What more can you say? Sometimes demos just work. Call your friends and let them know how good demos can be in Rocket League. It's a real discovery. Izzy Bell on the prop up, looking to get Midwest Mafia on the board again already on the drop down. Candy's there. Caffeine now with Chloe. The battle goes into the ball being redirected back to midfield into the waiting wheels of Izzy Bell. Now Lara, this is great for Midwest Mafia. Look how much time they're using. Finally a breakthrough from Max Candy's in the form of Chloe. Now to the McCain. It gets propped up instead. Candy, great spot to be in, but goes wide right. Candy with the boost pickup, now to Chloe. He'll be off the top. And McKaylin with the pinch. It's on, but Izzy Bell with the save. What a matchup. McKaylin doesn't go for it. Now it's dangerous, but Candy's got your back. Already three minutes. Wow, the pace of this has been incredible. Izzy Bell. Kaylin says no. It'll go across. We have a moment to breathe. How long would that moment last? Caffeine off the top. Take it away from Chloe. And Laura to Caffeine. It's a prop up and the follow up. It's good. Two nil for Midwest Mafia. The team play of Midwest Mafia is so good. It's undeniable. But we know that Max Candies do take some warming up in these games and they come alive the later the game goes. It's time to come alive. 2.30 left. It's on! No way! Oh, so close to being blocked, but Izzy Bell instead with another goal for Midwest Mafia. Call it two out of four shots. That was so close. I have not seen a shot like that be blocked in my time casting Rocket League, and I thought I was finally going to see one happen. And in the Women's Phoenix Cup, no less. Now two minutes and 20 to get yourself three goals through Max Candies. We know that they can do it. I am the Harbinger of Chaos, and I want to see it, quite frankly. Give me an overtime, why not? Let's be the chaotic community stream. Midwest Mafia are hanging on to a 3-0 lead, and they're looking real comfy in that lead. You can see how much time they're wasting out with their offensive plays, no rush. Simple, clean defense. How do you break through? You can play physical, get bumps, touches, smoke screens, or just good shots. That was one, but it isn't through. That one would have felt great for Max Candies. That could have made things feel possible, but you're still not out. 
Chloe does get it past. It'll be Izzy Bell and Caffeine combining, though. And they'll get control. Now Caffeine. Doesn't need the second touch, almost at least, as Candy to get back in time. I don't keep face cam on while I'm casting in mid-game, but when I tell you my jaw was on the floor thinking that ball was going to go in. Chloe with the prop. Laura is there. Now Chloe again off the backboard. Candy looks to clean it. Kaylin to Chloe again. That's been the key. Candy's low on boost, but it's still there. The presence means a lot. Chloe with the shot goes wide right. Midwest Mafia and Tina not to be denied with another shot on goal. Still up 3-0 here in game number three. This one takes it. McKaylin will not have a chance that time. Candy to Chloe. The shot. It's got speed. But the save from Isabel. Wow. The saves this game from Midwest Mafia have been so, so good. 10 seconds left to seal the deal. On the countdown, the crowd will scream it loud, but Midwest Mafia and Dino will take this one. What a war between these two teams. Two incredibly talented teams. These women have a lot to be proud of. Midwest Mafia and Dina will get the best of it in this series, and they will move on. Congratulations, indeed. Let's take another look here at the stats and how we got to this point. And boy, do they have a matchup ahead. Gen G Mobile One Racing are awaiting as the Whippersnappers beat out Gen G 3-2. Wow. That's incredible. That is truly incredible. Well, all right. <laughs> we had a heck of a game on our horizons. Let's check in on mainstream. I'll be right back. You guys know the deal. Let me set up for the next matchup.
All right. Hello to those who are still hanging out. I'm going to go ahead and hit the ad right now before I get too deep diving into what we got coming up on the horizon. Because I know we're all going to want to see this matchup. All right, to those still hanging, we've got ourselves one heck of a matchup here. Nine o'clock on the dot, it's Gen G Mobile One Racing Black versus Midwest Mafia and Dina. I know we're all believers in Midwest Mafia after the last game, but Gen G had a war against the Whippersnappers. Let's see how it goes. I'm excited as can be. Everyone is ready. <laughs> Always love sending that good to go when ready message it's just such a it's the best kind of message to send let's head in game here we go gen g level one racing midwest mafia D and dina oh no <laughs> heck of a start there not what you want not what you want <laughs> oh, I feel so teased. I was so pumped. I was ready. All right. We restart. We run it back, gang. It was just a taste. <laughs> Just, just the, uh, that was the trailer for the movie. Don't believe that there's any issue going on. Yeah, not that I see. Not sure what the delay is here. All right, we got teams joining back. We're good to go. Sorry about the delay there, but we're back in. Do have a best of five this time around, so we'll get that corrected. All right, we should be good to go now. In game and kicking off, Gen G versus Midwest Mafia and Dina, and already Gen G on the board, first goal. Didn't even have time to meet our players, and Angie was already taking the pass from Bella and making the shot happen. Love to see that if you're rooting for Gen G tonight. Getting on the board that quickly here after going down to Whippersnappers, who we have seen tonight as well. Caffeine, we learned that she is a shooter. Goes for it. Caddy denies it. Our same thing. Oh, shots there from Cat are crazy. Genji low and boost. Cad and Bella both have to fall back to recoup it. Angie still was able to hold control though while that was happening, which works out so good for Genji. Now Bella off the backboard. And it's ho ho ho! Genji! They get on the board again. It's 2-0 already. Well, that's what you want. If you're Genji, come out swinging, not to be impacted by the previous match. It, it, it's really important that you do that. It, it, it truly is. Already another one. 
Benji makes it 3-0. Apologies for going silent there. My microphone came off its stand. And almost had a black eye. <laughs> we recover, we regain. Genji up 3-0 early on. The West Mafia, I, I, I want to see that same level of aggression that we became so accustomed to in the match with Max Candice. Izzy Bell trying to do much of the same. Now to Caffeine. Caffeine to the corner. Can you get over the head of Cat? Yes, you can. But that demo just saved a shot. Lore had a chance. That demo was so imperative to disrupting that offensive play coming out from Midwest Mafia. Now Gen G, the pass from Bella to Angie. Hate that from Midwest Mafia. Now the passing continues. Bella props it up. Angie almost able to get that touch on the fadeaway. Cat now with another shot close. This one will be the wide left, however, and Caffeine's able to get a handle. But not for long, Bella. Right back to it. I feel like so far, Midwest Mafia, they must feel like Gen G is playing right on top of them because that is indeed the case. It has to feel frustrating. Caffeine, Bella could test. Cat, oh, right over from the ceiling. The bounces are perfect. And Gen G are up four to zero. And with 2.31 left to go, I refuse to count out Midwest Mafia and Dina after what we've seen from them so far tonight, but it does feel real good to be Gen G. And they start rolling on ahead. Laura and Caffeine combining, looking for an offensive play in the Gen G, but once again, Gen G shut it down. Take away the idea of offense. Angie to Bella has been a really gross passing combo, and every time they start passing back and forth, you know what's happening. Cat's setting up for a shot. This time, same thing. From midfield to Bella, and the read is good. Gen G make it five to zero. Everything is clicking for the blue side here today. And this game one is going real good for Gen G. And in terms of a turnaround from Midwest Mafia and Dina, which I stand by, I certainly think is possible. I'm starting to feel like it needs to be a work through this game and don't be out of this game, but also use this minute and 35 seconds as your tactical timeout to reassess and adjust as Bella sends another one home for Genji, make it six to zero. Because that's what's needed, is to adjust, to get on the same page as each other, to not be afraid to come out against this big, big name war and make plays happen. You know how to get offensive and aggressive. So far, it feels like Genji has just been all over Midwest Mafia and Dina, and they've made the pitch seem smaller. And the way you open that pitch, pitch back up is by getting aggressive and not just controlling where the ball goes, but controlling how the cars interact with it. And demos, bumping is the way to go. Genji send another one through. That's going to make it 7 to 0. What a game one, what a hat trick. The shooters are out today for Gen G Mobile One Racing Black. And you know it speaks to the whippersnappers. I gotta say, this game one's been impressive. And it, this is after a war of attrition going the distance between Gen G and the whippersnappers. Izzy Bell pulls through for Midwest Mafia and gets them on the board. <laughs> from the from the side wall in midfield it's a great shot now can you find more here in game one because again I, I feel like you use this time to adjust going forward and get some confidence get some shots through okay Izzy Bell I loved that look 
more of that early on in game two and we could have a, a really strong showing from Midwest Mafia. Still a chance to get in the board more here in game number one, though it does seem written in the stars for Gen.G to take this one. Izzy Bell from the ceiling. But Bella has enough to contest and get it back towards that other side for the time being. But now Caffeine can't get it past Cat. Angie. Up to Cat, back to Angie. Now drops. The demo will slow it down, but Angie still with the look. No good. Bella. Not there either. Ten seconds at the go here in game number one. And the stats for this one will be fun to read. Lots of shots on target. But hey, one more. Oh, gets denied by time. And Gen G Mobile One Racing take game number one. They do it in style, as you see from that scoreboard. A hat trick for Bella. Two apiece for the rest of Gen G. Lots of assists, lots of demos. It's what you want if you're Gen G. Went too fast, almost put us on Farmstead. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Big time GG's on that one. Looking forward to game number two and seeing if we can get more of that Midwest Mafia. <laughs> Lots of love in the chat between these two teams. I know you guys can't see it. So that, that, that is intentional, but I, I love to see the camaraderie tonight in the Women's Cup. All the teams have been real positive towards each other, and I love that. <laughs> Gonna wait for the lobby to get back up here. Did another player get kicked? Gen G are up 1-0 in this best of five. Reminder, we are at the best of five portion starting for this tournament tonight. This is day one. More action tomorrow for day number two of the Women's Cup. Lots of yeets happening tonight, but everybody's back in. Here we go. Game two. On the kickoff already. Gen G getting aggressive. Looking to run it through. Caffeine, nice denial. Bella. I liked that look for sure, but not to be had this time. Angie. That by Caffeine. Again, a shot on from Midwest Mafia. I already like the looks. Getting aggressive here early on. But it is answered, and this is the risk with getting aggressive. But the fallback is good. Bella dancing in front of that orange side. And had back up, and now it's a rush back. Smithwest Mafia and Dina are back on the offensive. I like the look for Caffeine if it's there. But Bella makes the most of the boost, and on the landing gets the deflection. Caffeine from the corner. Does get it away from one. But Bella, present to Cat. Stays in the corner for Genji. Watch for Angie to bring it down to Bella, who's already racing back for midfield. The shot's going to be on, but it's blocked out by Izzy Bell. And Caffeine on the fast break. Can he get it past? It's slowed up. The slow hang in front works out for Gen G. Turns into a shot from Bella. It does go right. It's not in, but Bella sticks with it. And Angie, the closer, makes it 1 0 for Gen G. Here we go, once again. Midwest Mafia has done a great job of keeping this one close so far. 
but now you've got to get your offense rolling. It's gonna be tough to do with Angie making plays like that on the double touch. It's home. Genji take a 2-0 lead on a great double touch from Angie. Seeing a lot of love still for Midwest Mafia and Dina, and they're showing hope in this game too. So keep the love up, keep the vamos up. Offensive play out from Genji. Cat with a shot. It's on. It's in. 3 0. Genji are getting rolling. This was the problem that happened in game number one as well. Midwest Mafia were just a bit sprinted out and they were finding themselves playing catch up. 3 0 is not a spot where you're playing as much catch up if you get yourself on the board. You got to deny more shots, but Bella with the double. This one won't go through. And this is opportunity now for Midwest Mafia, and they know it. Isabel rushes to it from the corner. Intercepted. Cat to Bella to net. 4 0. Genji. The ball keeps rolling for Gen G. Mobile One Racing Black and Midwest Mafia and Dina are just trying to get on the board and make this competitive, and they certainly have by looks. The score does not reflect this game to me, plain and simple. Fell with another look, this one denied and deflected, and opportunity arises, but Angie is there first. Another opportunity presents. Caffeine, though, tough deflection on the challenge attempt. Bella from mid. Another good look. Pounces it up over a couple. And Angie to Cat. Watch out for Bella. And there it is, the danger. How many times have I said watch out for Bella because the presence so far, Bella is making that car seem like it's in multiples. Any opportunity that presents is is jumped on. We see another one here. Lots of boost to work with, too. Now Angie on the follow-up. Genji will fall back for defense. Caffeine with a decent look. We didn't lose Laura there. Caffeine now looking to contest with Izzy Bell. They do get away with it. Laura looks still stuck out, unfortunately. Angie into the corner. Unfortunate for Midwest Mafia to have Laura seemingly lag out. And Angie will get a shot through and make a five now. For Gen G. And it looks like Laura did lose connection. So it will be unfortunately a 2v3. Bella with a look, trying to get it through, not going to be there. Very unfortunate for Midwest Mafia to lose a member here. But still good looks for Midwest Mafia, and of course, respect for sticking with it. Genji do seem to be relaxing the offense a bit. But now back on it. So full respect to both teams as they're taking it as seriously as they can given the situation. Apologies, I was sharing the situation that we've got going on with Advents as another goal will come through for Gen G. Make it 6-0. So it will be a grace period between us. We'll see if it's taken. Gen G now up 6-0. As we get finished out here with this game number two, it is very unfortunate we can see. Hopefully we can get it fixed and have a real game number three. I did like the looks for Midwest Mafia a lot. 
there was a lot of opportunities that they seemed to have that unfortunately just kind of fell by the wayside. And it looks like that will do it. So Gen G will be getting the better today. And that will do it. Gen G will be advancing. Unfortunately, not in the way we would have liked, but we got to see some exciting shots and some fun shooting, and that game does go to Gen G. So congratulations as they will move on. Very unfortunate. Gen G will be playing the winners of Schmicklitz. Uh, sorry, that name is cut off. Warriors and Lotus 8 Esports White. So keep your eyes on to that. Uh, big thank you for everybody hanging out. Uh, my name was Anthony Mount. Let me go back to here so you can see me on the way out. Big thanks to everybody for hanging out and to the players for being a part tonight. My name was Anthony Malm. This was the Women's Phoenix Cup. So to all the love of Sporty who we're raiding out to on that mainstream Rocket Star as well and the entire team working behind it. Thank you for joining in. Thanks to the players for giving me some fun stuff to cast. I love being a part of it. Love these events. Make sure more of them happen in the future. They're very important to the health of every esports scene, Rocket League especially. You all have a wonderful night. Be safe. Be great. Lots of love. Again, tell Sporty on the mainstream, I said hello. And there you go. So long, everybody. Have a great night. Pop out of there. I mean, revving their cars even. You can hear their cars going off on the first kickoff. And they want to secure those early goals. Yeah, kind of a good start on them. Good start it has proven to be good for G2. But can G2 keep this up? Not sure. Yes, 